Welcome back, everybody, to Decently and Decent uh, episode, I think it's 17, could be 18, real bad, early onset Alzheimer's, but I'm joined here, I'm excited, guys, I want to be honest with you, now, let me look into the camera here, I'm excited because I'm joined here by my my lovely wife and colleague, Mrs. Lush, a uh, little solo round of applause, you guys that listen in, uh, you know, I've been doing some solo episodes lately, and we were out to dinner tonight. Jackson's off with the grandparents for two nights. Doesn't I mean this is an unusual circumstance? So our child's with the grandparents. We're out to dinner. He waits till my first <laughs> and only spicy margarita's gone and says, <laughs> like, "Hey, honey. Hey, hon. You want to be on the pod? Let's go do a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Not like, hey, let's go to the movies." The casino. Want to go home and chill out and have some popcorn? It's our first night without the kid, and any normal husband would be like, "Yo, let's go, let's go out, get fucked up, we'll like go have fun." And I'm like, "We're out to dinner. We had a couple of drinks, so we're having fun." But I'm like, "You had a couple. You want to go? Oh, you had like one because you're a lightweight. Yeah, pussy. you waited for my margarita to be gone. <laughs> I was like, hey, you want to come do the podcast with me? That's normal. <laughs> I'm fucking built different. <laughs> I'm focused. I'm laser focused." Okay, and I just am happy to have you here, honey. I love it you. worked. It did, and she like she didn't immediately throw up in her mouth, so she was like, "Meh." I was like, "That's a yes. That's a fucking yes. Let's go, dude." <laughs> Sweet. So we got uh, we got some stuff I'm pumped about uh, to talk about. Some st- something I was just made privy to concerning a former sponsor of mine. That you guys have probably heard of if you watch the main channel. Uh, there's a CEO uh, of the company called Scentbird. That's like a cologne subscription company, a fragrance subscription company that I've done some some work with. And they've been it's been good. They've been great. The products are fine. It is what you think it is. But recently, the CEO of that company has been under fire because she has some absolutely wackadoodle bullshit, spiritual guided meditation. We'll get into it. We're going to get into it. I'm just teasing you right now. I'm tickling the underside of your ball bag, just flapping the labias back and forth right now, just getting you excited, right? Just a little. want to get the juices flowing, but we'll get into it. And then I threw out a couple questions to, uh, you know, cl- classic Twitter and, and, and the YouTube community posts just to see if there's anything you guys um, particularly were interested in because it's not every day that I have my wife on with me. So, so I'm here like a pig and shit. I'm excited. She's over here doing some charity work for me. I'm just kidding. She she secretly enjoys coming on here. I mean, you guys know we do videos every week on the main channel. Podcast settings a little bit different, but uh, hun, tell me about this week. I'm going to start right hot, right? Oh, how geez. how has this week impacted your life? I mean, you're just a very overtly uh, outspoken political pundit. So I. <laughs> so needless to say it hasn't impacted my life at all yeah yeah it's if it's not if it's not on your instagram feed of like mom memes then it's whatever there was like one political meme that got me and i sent it to you today and it was just a picture yeah all right so this was hilarious i'm not gonna pull it up because I don't have an easy way to access it, but it was a picture. I, I guess it was from the RNC, the Republic Public National Convention. And there is uh, people in the crowd wearing the ear bandage in, I guess, solidarity with DJT, um, which is so fucking funny. So if you guys probably know. It very cult. Like, yeah, I was looking yeah. at this picture like, wow. Super funny. Okay. So he came out, obviously, on, you know, night one as, like, the spectator and guest of the RNC, and he had the ear bandaged. This is, I mean, what, two days after the attempted assassination. And um, fine, whatever. The speculation is out of control. So, like, I'm seeing people on, who are like, all right, well, how how big of a bandage would you normally wear? Like, is this all just, like, posturing? Is this, like, theater? Or does he really need a bandage that size? And there's Twitter threads, like, physician here, normally, when, you know, like, former... Former uh, ambulance, whatever, uh, for, former first responder. Normally when I use God, blah, blah, blah. So everyone's got this theory. I'm like, dude, it's a fucking bandage on his ear it's that just bandage. gets shot. Like, let's relax. But fast forward to today. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, nurse here. Like, oh, yeah, nurse. Whatever the hell you can get to stay on the ear is what you're going to put on there. I'm going to tell you right now, it's a difficult spot. Yeah, it's tough to tape. You There's need a hair good, all around it. Something that will stay. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to tell you there's no right answer to that. <laughs> no right answer. And... 
but the meme you sent me today was just a bunch of people in the crowd wearing wearing an air bandage, and I was like, that's that's some funny shit, man. That's some that's funny it. shit. So other than that, catching my attention today and give me a little chuckle, <sighs> my life hasn't changed at all. Yeah, no, it, 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 yeah, we were we were at a cookout at an in law it it, it um, some family's place. Um, the day it happened, we were just finished up getting ready to leave, and I picked up my phone. I'm like, oh shit! And I was like. Someone just tried to blow DJT's head off, and you're like, "What the fuck?" So we turn on the news. We're like, "Okay, this is crazy." And I've had a, I've had you know a few days to process it. A week, I guess it's been what maybe like four or five days now, not even less than a week. Five it was days. Saturday. It was so. Saturday, yeah, Saturday afternoon. I've been consuming a lot of the content around it. Obviously, there's there's great memes. There's intense speculation around the United States Secret Service and the absolute catastrophic failure. Uh, on their part to, I mean, if you look at the details, it's just obscene. The, like, I mean, you, you, if you, the topographical view of this, it's like, wh- all right, here's a couple of buildings and everything else is empty. Where's the one place someone might be able to have the high ground vantage point to shoot a potential presidential candidate? It's like, here's this one spot. And that, and there was just a random fucking pleb was allowed to climb up there with a rifle and get shots up. And then there's footage coming out now where there's fucking literally just people in the crowd, like random people there, like outside of the security zone, like, hey, there's a guy on the roof. What's this guy doing on the roof? And there's other reports coming out that the Secret Service knew about his presence and they were just not doing anything. Like, there's just some crazy shit. I obviously... I'm careful to try and be like, all right, you obviously can't trust everything you see from a fucking X account or a Twitter account. So I do my best to to vet the sources, but it's all just very eerie. Like it feels very unusual. I've seen a lot of some of the th- some of the things I lend some credence to is <clears throat> some of uh, some of the pundits that are like ex military guys. There's some guys that are uh, former Secret Service. There's some guys that are former counter sniper units that have looked at all of the data and been like, I don't understand how it's possible that this guy was able to get up on that roof, get cozy, and fire off five rounds with a fucking AR. Like, it makes no fucking sense. If you have basic level of competence as a, you know, account, whatever, you, as a Secret Service deployment. So there's, and of course, this creates a lot of speculation. There's all types of fucking rabbit holes you can go down, but... But yeah, it's been interesting. Uh, interesting things have calmed down a little bit. I uploaded a video today. I'm going on a tangent here, and I appreciate you listening to me because I just I'm sometimes here. I just need to get it off my chest. Um, it was a brainworms video, and you know, very. I mean, I've been doing brainworms for years. It started brainworms actually started pandemic era from kind of the madness that spawned from that with the mask mandates and people freaking out, the mask anti masker shit. Remember how big that was back in the day, like the. It's still a thing. <laughs> it's still a thing. Sadly. Yeah, it is. Uh, anyways, that so it's been around for years. And today, I don't usually get very political. And I try to look at things objectively. But I did today was just talking a little bit about the Secret Service, what I just spoke about. I spoke about Destiny, who is a very popular, I guess, kind of like liberal political streamer who has been under intense scrutiny this week because he is so far off the fucking deep end and like terminally online and completely lacks any sort of empathy this uh you you were aware of the guy that lost his life there that day who caught a stray who shot in the head died and so this dude destiny who's like one of the one of the bigger streamers he's in a lot of debates he's been present in a lot of debates with some of the biggest pundits in the space jordan peterson he's talked about the israel palestine thing He's just going on tangents about, you know, like basically his thing was like, oh, well, you were at a you were at a Trump rally, you're a fucking idiot. Like, I don't care if you died, basically. His whole his oh. whole thing. This is like a firefighter, father, family, wife, and he was pretty much just like, Yeah, this guy's a fucking loser, who cares? So that that lit a fire, obviously, uh, under a lot of people's asses on the internet. I spoke briefly about that. Um, because I just his whole angle is like, well, you know, if if conservatives never show any empathy, like when whatever, it's kind of like eye for an eye type of shit. It's like, oh, now and it, and it just it's very sad for me, the whole thing to watch, because I like to think in my travels on the Internet, as much as I like to uh, critically commentate and criticize people 
over their behavior. I still try to employ empathy when it's necessary, right? If I see someone like in a brain burns vid or like a body camera, I'm like, all right, this person clearly is unwell, mentally struggling. Like, we'll talk about it, but I'm not going to shit on them because they just need some help or something. And speaking to that point, I feel like the internet has gotten to a place where specifically in kind of these part, like the partisan battlefield of politics, where when you're so deep in it, you lose the ability to see the forest for the trees and realize like we're all human, right? And you just lack any sort of basic level of human empathy to the point where like, oh, this guy doesn't agree with my policies. Like who cares if he's fucking dead? Like, and that just makes me sad. So I spoke to that in my video today. And kind of a downer to start the video on. I just wanted to, I just wanted to rant a little bit. Thank you for listening. Cause I know, you know, when we're at home, we chat a little bit about it, but there's not a lot of political talk at the dinner table in our house. We just, no. we love what we do. We love our family. We love each other. We don't let that shit run our lives. Obviously there's certain things that matter that's going on, but I've found that you can really get through life mostly and live a pretty sweet life without bothering yourself with a lot of the things that people are constantly fucking arguing and shitting their pants over on the internet. And the fucked up piece is that like a lot of people, this that's like their, that's their, uh, their business model, right? So like for political pundits, I mean, this is one of the biggest commentary spaces in the world. So certainly it would be a different case if that was my thing. I've just been fortunate enough to be able to build a brand around being a dumbass fucking loser idiot being an idiot on camera pundit. Wow, okay. <laughs> a little bit, which isn't as political. Um, But yeah, so that was it. Been a wild week. We'll see what happens. I'm not sure just looking into the future what the next couple months are going to bring. I think it's going to be a pretty interesting uh, few months leading up to, you know, the election. Uh, we didn't talk anything about Biden. In the <laughs> you didn't? No, I'm just saying, like, what is there to say? I mean, it's all been said. Oh, you, you told just, me he had COVID. Oh, he does have COVID now, yeah, which is, I, I think that's their, I think that's his kind of play to kind of have a successor. I think he's going to pass it off at some point. I think it's it's at the point now where, like, his, like, the DNC, like, his own party is like, listen, you need to kind of, you need to get out of the way because we, well, <laughs> let's shit or get off the pot here, bro. You're just too old. He's clearly cognitively declined. He's fucked up. So when your own party is being like, hey, buddy, you need to step back. And then I don't know what that means. Like, do they bring in someone else? Do they give it over to Kamala? Kamala? How do you say it? Kamala? It's Kamala, right? I think so. It's Kamala Harris. Is that what it is? No. <laughs> Kamala Harris. Yeah. It's Peruvian, right? Sp uh, Spanish, Peruvian, and Venezuelan. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's what you told me. You're making shit up. I am. I am. I'm talking right out of my head. I've never talked about that lady in my life. <laughs> nope. Neither have I until right now. Um. So on, on to the next thing. I guess uh, this is kind of just the theme of this week where I start a little bit political because you have to after an attempted assassination. You talk about it a little bit. But the reality is like not much has changed in our life. Uh, we'll see what happens. If you're part of the, the, the group of people that theorizes and likes to conspire about there being some sort of deep state and that this was, you know, it, you know, there's, there's two explanations. Incompetence, certainly obvious, obviously an explanation. And then something much more nefarious which would lend itself to this idea that there's other people pulling the strings that maybe wanted this to happen or put the wheels in motion and stuff. I'm not here to speculate, but if that is the case, I think that would lend itself to the next couple of months being fucking crazy. Cause if you are, if you are of that mindset that this is like a failed attempt by something that wasn't just this lone gunman, right? This, this random guy that somehow doesn't have any sort of social media presence. They can't find any information on him. They can't get into his phone. Like, what do you know? They don't know anything about him. Mm. If you're of the of the opinion that it was just him all on his own, okay, cool. He missed it, fucked it up. But if you're maybe looking a little deeper into it and you're thinking maybe there's more to it, could be interesting. Anyways, we'll leave it at that. Maybe we'll be back in a couple of weeks after. Maybe you'll be back in know, a couple of weeks. A nuke drops. <laughs> Uh, that's probably the most we've ever talked about politics together. The same I didn't room. say a fucking word. I know you didn't. I just went bananas. 
Uh, but let's let's reel it back in now because I I was asking uh, a couple of you guys I uh, on uh, on X. I was like, hey, I'm bringing the wife on for the podcast. What should we cover? Anything goes. Happy to get uncomfortable. I feel like we already. That's what you wrote. I did. Yeah. Wow. Happy <laughs> with to get little, uncomfortable with wow. the little raccoon me. Wow. My f- my friend Dan. Wait, put, he's like, oh, my wife had a drink tonight. I'm going to let her get uncomfortable. <laughs> Keep drinking that wine, sweetheart. Instead of taking her home to seduce her, I'm going to take her home to do a podcast. Yeah, well, we didn't. We took care of that ahead of time. Excuse yeah. you. <laughs> no seduction necessary. Squirrel got the nut already. He's fucking wow. ready to settle in. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, my friend Dan asks, how toilet paper is supposed to go on the roll? This is very important. Over. Please don't. Never under. Okay. Over. Would you put your fucking... Paper towels under like disgusting. Come on. I actually, I responded to him. I said, if she disagrees with the obvious answer, we're done. And I'm glad you answered that because there is no other correct answer. It's over the top. Has to be. Yes. That I feel like that should be ubiquitous, but you know, there's people that do it under. And the question is, why would they do that? I don't know. Sociopathy. (laughs) That's a pretty fair answer. Actually, (laughs) (laughs) I've just been crazier stuff from people. Ribbit. Come uh, on, we dude. also have a frog as a third guest here tonight. This is <laughs> all right. If they're I'll listening, I can down. like if they're listening, I could probably pull one over on them. But if they're watching, they're not gonna see a frog, so it's tough to <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna stop the joke in its tracks right there. Um this guy says there's been a bunch of things to talk about. Oh, did he actually reply to this? I haven't seen. He said, What do you think about the future funding for U.S. troops as of today in the future. What? And I said, I'm kind of confused on all what you mean about how troops are funded at the government level. Policy related needs some context. And he says, at the government level. Sorry for the confusion. I'm like, well, you just asked the one question. My my wife will literally just glaze over and be like, I. <laughs> I here, here's my take on it. Okay. He's asking the future funding for U.S. troops of today and of the future. At the government level, I guess maybe that means like uh, military spending. I'm taking it as like recruitment. I know that across the board, as far as the U.S. military goes, recruiting numbers are in the fucking trenches. There's been a real decline over the last several decades of getting people to sign up for branches of the military. And there's a million reasons behind that. I've talked to that point briefly with my friend, Eli, obviously, who does the Unsub podcast, mm-hmm. and he's a veteran, and a lot of my friends from Texas are veterans. Um, there's probably a lot of reasons why. I think just kind of this a, a baseline uh, decline in patriotism over the last several decades, um, as I think is no surprise to anybody. And you could go into it, but I'm not an expert, so I don't want to go... Uh, I don't want to go too deep into it, but I think there part of it is like the social media age kind of pull, pulling the veil back on a lot of things where a lot of the patriotism from like the 60s, 70s, 80s, like post-World War II era up through the 90s was very controlled and manufactured. And it was easier to kind of control the narrative of why you should fight and why you should love your country. And I think like things have really unraveled in a sense where you've seen behind the veil a little bit and there's a lot of a lot more disdain just for the government in general. And so there's less people willing to sign up and put their lives on the line for this government that they might have a lot more disdain for, for whatever reason. I mean, everyone can come to their own conclusions, their own conclusions around that. But that would be my answer to that one. I'm happy to take He's that one for you, sweetheart. Funding the troops. Yeah, I'm just doing what I can here. I don't. The I hell? Still don't. You're answering a whole nother question, but okay. Oh, well, well, funding the troops. You need troops in the first place to enlist in order to fund them. Okay. Um. <laughs> Keep scrolling. <laughs> oh, here was a good one. I'm just curious. I mean, this doesn't have to be. A, oh, here we go. Uh, so that's slowly say. No, I said let us get uncomfortable. Huh? I said scroll, motherfucker. All right, fine. Scroll. Holy shit, yeah. Yeah, no, no. I'm not doing that. That's a lot. You can answer for yourself if you'd like. (laughs) No, that's too much. Uh, All right, good question. So I'm the president, sweetheart. God saves me from a crazy shooter. How fast do we smash afterward? Do you think Donald Trump has smashed since? Just, uh, Just to pivot the question real quick. Wait, What? 
That's a lot of questions and things. That's to think about. one question. If I'm the president, there's a failed attempt on my life. I I fucking get up. I raise my fist. I get everyone patriotic again with the blood and the ear and the photo with my fist and the flag. You've seen the whole thing. I come home. You're my wife. How fast are we smashing? Right away, right? You're feeling more patriotic than ever. You're wearing a fucking. You're wearing a an American flag bikini. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck you want me to say to that. <laughs> the answer is immediately. Okay. But the follow-up question that I pivoted to is, do you think Donald Trump has smashed since then? Yeah. You think so? Mm-hmm. Oh, damn, dude. Oh, you're <laughs> like, you're, like, that was decisive. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah? Is he still even, ma- I don't even, is he, is, was it Iv- Ivanka's his daughter or his wife? Does he even have a wife? He I'm, has a wife, Melania. Oh, Melania. Okay, you still think they hit it regularly? You think he hits it regularly? Um, sometimes. Okay, so not regularly, but probably sometimes. at his beck and call. <laughs> it's it's more of like a uh, it's like it's exactly what you think it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, all right, honey. Yeah. It's yeah. Thursday. Yeah. At 5 did, like PM. his his fucking Apple Watch alarm goes off. He's like, well. Here we go. <laughs> she's already knows. She's preparing. She's a few minutes before. And you think she nibbled that that torch deer a little bit? Nope. Get him all riled up. Little, nope. Just a little pinky in the fucking busted up He left up a ear. bandaged. You, you think he left a bandage? Yeah, bandage on or like, bandage off during the first? like a scrape and he doesn't want her to know that it's not that bad. <laughs> probably just the tiniest little shit. That was what I thought. When I saw the bandage the other night, I'm like, what? A, like, so... It could have taken a chunk of his ear off, certainly. Bullet at high velocity will do that. Could of take course. a whole chunk off. Or it could be almost negligible to the point where it's gonna be like when he takes it off, I'd be like, oh, that's a little fucking what the fuck is that? That's and what you I'm know expecting. and you know that the Reddit fucking sleuths are gonna be going crazy the second they find his ear without a bandage. Crazy. Yeah. It's gonna be the talk of the internet. His bandage is off, and now we're all re speculating about how blah blah blah. Who cares? The motherfucker got hit in the air by a bullet half an inch away from his brain. Whatever. I wouldn't be surprised. I did read a report that he said that there was a little chunk of his ear missing. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll be curious to, I'll be curious to see. Um, Wait, do you think he'll have plastic surgery to fix it? That's a good question, dude. No, uh, definitely not. No, if it was if it was a cosmetic thing that wasn't a result of one of the most unifyingly patriotic fucking events of all time. Oh, it's my mother. Oh, fuck. All right, you know what? We're on podcast. Why not? Is it Jackson? Probably. Uh, okay, we're back. We had a quick intermission there because we had a call from <clears throat> our five year old who is currently uh, at some other families for a couple nights and he's not usually away from home. So we had to do the old night routine via FaceTime. Hence why we're working together. That's moment. right. Which is why I was able to get my wife on the podcast because she's able to I'm turn the, child. the mom mode switch off for a couple hours. So uh, I don't remember how we stopped. So we're just going to keep it moving. Uh, this, per- this person wants to know, sweetheart, why does she always look mad? Like even when she smiles. Me. <laughs> RBF. <laughs> Resting bitch face. You know what's funny? Like there when we first started doing videos on Lush Life, there were so there was a pretty good amount of comments that people just that weren't used to you, they didn't know you, and were like, Your wife clearly is like everyone just has something to say. And mm-hmm. it was always and it was always because like you weren't constantly like, giddy and gleeful and smiling and laughing and everything. And I'm like, listen, that is a superpower because my wife is willing to do this, A, which is fantastic. But B, she's just being herself. Like if something's not amusing to her, that RBF is going to cut through like a fucking hot knife through butter. Yeah. And it does until this day. And now if you're persistent and you make enough videos like we have, we have hundreds of videos now on that channel. I'll crack. People fucking love it. Yeah, you crack. crack. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's like when you actually, when something stupid happens and you have a laughing (laughs) fit, when you like, that's like the sweet release. So, well, the people that watch us and are like, oh, this bitch never like, laughs. That's what I've been waiting for. Yeah. They're like, oh my God, there's something that she actually does think things are funny. It's just never the thing you think is going to be It's always funny. something so fucking stupid. <laughs> like someone farting. Yes. Um, <laughs> oftentimes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. This one right here? Yeah. Yeah. So, this, so we asked the YouTube audience as well. Or, yeah, actually, come back in here, Christian. Sorry. 
So we also asked the YouTube audience. We're no longer an ask this. Uh, Andrew wants to know best sangria, red or white, poop stories, kids <laughs> or adults. Well, that's unfortunately there's both. And gardening. And there's a few poop stories that are always good for a few laughs, but you're not wrong. Uh, I'm a red sangria guy. What about yourself? Definitely red. Yeah. No like, question. I've had a few good white sangrias, but red. Nothing compares. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like white wine maybe is naturally a little can bit be better sweeter as it, it is. And it's definitely like a summery drink. That's but what I was going to say. It can be better in the summer. Very seasonal. Fall and winter. Definitely red sangria. Um, gardening. I'll answer this one for you. No. My wife's thumb is about as green as a black and white noir film. So needless to say, she's able to occasionally water things once a couple, every couple months. Yeah. But if I want anything to happen landscaping or flowers wise, I got to be on the ball. I take care of the inside of the house. You take care of the outside. That's right. That's right. That's it. Yeah. Like, like we, don't we, bother me otherwise. Yeah. We got a vine. We, we have a, <laughs> this is such a stupid story, but I'm going to tell it because it's my fucking podcast and I'll tell the stories I want to. The plant. It's so stupid. That Jackson brought home from school. He did a thing in kindergarten where they like all planted these seeds in a solo cup. He planted like some bean seeds. It was like some green, be- some sort, some strain of bean. And it grows in the solo cup. He brought it home. It was like three leaves. It was coming out and it was clearly like it would have died because it's a solo cup, no dirt. So I was like, fuck it. I want to see what happens. So I planted this thing in, I wouldn't call what I have a gar- is uh, What we have is not a garden. It's no. literally like, it's like the there's front of mulch. our house and there's like mulch and there's like a big bush, but there was some space. So I planted, I, I took it out of the solo cup, planted it. It starts growing. It's like this vine. I'm like, what the fuck? So it starts growing all over the place. Crazy. I went and bought trestles and like built up this bamboo trestle and it's like growing up the trestle to the top. And now it's like growing up the house. So this little thing he started in kindergarten, and I'm like, uh, I feel like challenged. Like I need to see this thing through. Like I need at to, least one bean needs to sprout. I from want it. a fucking bean to sprout, but it's just this vine that won't stop fucking growing. It's like two feet over my head now. It, like you put, I added an extension to the threshold, so now it's like growing up the side of the house. And every day I wake up, and it's like three or four more feet, like wrapped around, growing up. And I'm like, how fucking high is this thing gonna go? Do you think that there's been a green bean? And all the animals around here have eaten it? No. There's you, so many animals, dude. First of all, you're fucking crazy for thinking that, first of all. Secondly, I mean, yeah, we live in the burbs, so there's some animals, but they're not uh, over here munching on green beans. You can tell if those there was- bunnies gonna, really, I know that bunnies are supposed to like carrots, but they like green beans they too. They fuck up cabbage too, if you remember Owl in the Garden. Good book. <laughs> Uh, but no, I feel like I would notice if it was ready to bloom. I'm just, I'm not convinced it's not just a weed, like a, just a vine it looks weed. Like yeah. it. <laughs> but I, I'm so fucking Leon's determined. So a giant weed in front of our house. I am not determined. The kind of weed that you can smoke and, and I t- enjoy. So me and Jack, it's like our thing now. Every day, like he'll come home from school and be like, Jackson, check out the fucking vine. He's like, oh, it's getting so dead. It's taller than you now. And I'm like, hell yeah, brother. I was like, we're going to get the, we're going to keep this thing going. And if we don't get beans off of this, I'm going scorched earth. We better get some beans. I was like, we'll cook them up. We'll eat them and we will feel proud that we saw it through. And that's my gardening story. And you think I'm crazy for it. And that's You're fun. crazy. <laughs> that's fucking fun. Do uh, you have a good poop story? I mean, yeah, I pooped my pants in a Starbucks once. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you said it. I was going to. Um, uh, just It was like an oops a daisy. I thought that was a fart, but I squirted and <laughs> this is awkward. <laughs> was I, I was, we were dating at the time, right? Yeah. You told me about it. Yeah, we were. This was way back in like bright. I was in Brighton, I think. This was probably before we even lived together, I think. I think I was still living maybe in the halfway house, the so-called halfway house. Uh, I don't even remember what I did. I think I went to the bathroom, cleaned up what was... I mean, it wasn't like a huge mess. It was just like a some skid marks. Yeah, okay. And uh, I did what everybody does in that situation. I took my boxers off. Snort, Threw them out. Snorted it. Put him back on, left, came home, slept with my girlfriend with the boxers on. We rolled around in it together. And now uh, they are in a glass display case hanging on the wall in my study. And that's my poop story. And we're happily married. (laughs) We lived happily ever after. Do you have a poop story, hon? It's do you have a, do you, you ever, don't know it. Do you ever cut a turd with that thong? <laughs> you fucking no. sick fuck. I'm about to. Everyone listening is going to be like, man, I used to think she was hot. No, I'm just thinking about no. poop. Yeah. It's it's the worst story ever. You've oh, never heard it. Good Lord. It's, what is 
I don't know if I can say all right, it. Let it go. Just let it all out. You're in good company here. You're amongst friends. I can't. What? I'm not going to settle for that. Just give it. Did you poop? Well, you, this happened when we were together. I remember you telling me about this. Oh, really? Yeah, you, it was the same as the same idea, right? It was a little whoops, no, a, little no, whoops a daisy. No, no. I was locked out of the house one time at our old house. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you poop your pants? <laughs> Come on. I'm just beep. <laughs> just like, this is not the right time for this story. I, I mean, there's, there's certain things where once you're so far in, there's no backpedaling. <laughs> You know, I think it's one of those moments. Um, just be. I believe the fifth. Be, judi- <laughs> be, judis- be judicious about how many details you share. Like, so did you poop your pants? Yes or no? We'll start there. Nope. Oh, well, then what the fuck? Then why does it even matter? Because I even- pooped outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew I'd get it out of you. <laughs> well, that's fine. It's like camping. Yeah, that's like some fucking, that's like some uh, some crunchy shit. No problem. Pooping it outside. It was not okay. It was not okay. Yeah, but you are the, I mean, you're like, you're the biggest like anti-camper princess ever, so you probably felt super dirty. <laughs> so like but, people like, poop in the woods and I'm like, oh my God, how do people poop in the woods? And then uh, I got so locked out of my house. I'm glad you guys are hearing the story because I think this is the first time I'm hearing about this. It is. You pooped outside our old house? Yeah. Where the fuck was it? Did I step in it? <laughs> oh, I cleaned it up. Oh, you should have let it fertilize at least. Okay. <laughs> where, where did you, where was I'm it? I'm not oh. telling you that right oh, now. Oh my God. You like, said how, be judicial how, about how, the she details. Just, <laughs> <laughs> she just slapped me. It was a little, kind of stung me a little bit, to be honest. Good. Son of a bitch. That was oh, a no. good story. I don't want to talk about poop anymore. No, yeah. We're done with the poop stories. That was great. Thank you for sharing up top. No. No, no high five for that. All right. Uh, oh man, so this is this is a bit of a curveball because I didn't. Uh, I've only recently seen this, and you don't know much about. You, you, I've talked about Cody Co before. Are you familiar? Like I know of another him. commentary YouTuber, huge successful YouTuber, musician, comedian. Anyways, he is under fire because when early on in his career, like around. When I was first starting to have some traction on YouTube and he was, we were on the same kind of level. He's gone on to completely dwarf my career. Not jealous at all. No big deal. Anyways, <laughs> I'm not jealous anymore because he's under fire for allegations of sleeping with a 17 year old when he was 25. Mm-hmm. Tell me, tell me about that. What are we thinking about? What do you that? want me to say about it? That's not okay. Do we condone that? No. <laughs> right. So this is Tana Mojo. Monjo, who's like one, she's also a huge YouTuber. She was big when she was a teenager. She's gone on to continue a, a pretty big career, kind of like the Hollywood LA side of YouTube. You showed me her before. Yeah, we've looked at Tana before. Um, and there's always been like weird rumors about it. And then she's like, she's made little like off, off colored remarks about it without ever saying it. And it finally came out that like, oh yeah, they, they did a collab or whatever back in the day. And as more information has come out, it's like they were flirting heavy and whoever was with him at the time was like, told him like, hey, um, you know, she's only 17. He's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Thanks. And then went on to later that night, whatever. So I, yeah, I don't know, man. This shit just seems to happen all the time. I'm always a little bit skeptical of of trying to throw stones when it's like, uh, you know, like a 19 year old and a 17 year old or like, you know, freshman in college, high school. Like when you're within a few years, but 25 is a little that's kind mm. of on the upper side of being aside from the legal. You should know better. 100 <laughs> percent. And, it, you know, there's obviously the the legality of it, like depending on what state you're in, age of consent, those things, those numbers are obviously just kind of like man-made arbitrarily based on where we think you become an adult kind of. And there's reasons for those laws, obviously, but then there's just the obvious, like, what are you doing? (laughs) Mm. So I never talked, what do I think about the allegations? I don't know. He recently got married. He's with a chick, Kelsey, who's Super cool, super funny. They're great together. I've always liked his content. He seems like a cool guy. It just feels like one of those situations where he made a stupid call and now it's coming back and the way the internet works, there is nothing quite like uh, 
sexual allegations around minors that can fuck your shit up real quick. Right. So. So wait, this was a while ago. That happened a while ago. Yes. And I, I mean, Tana, this must have been six, seven, eight years ago now. Okay. You know, Tana's in her 20s, mid 20s now, and he's fucking at least 30. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't have much to say about it. I, I feel bad because I don't think he deserves to get eviscerated and lose his whole life. But at the same time, like actions have consequences and sometimes these things crop up. And, you know, it, the, the crazy part to me is like it could be. She could have been 17 and 11 and a half months. And if he had waited two weeks and she was 18, like, oh, what's anybody going to say? Whatever. Creepy sure. 25, 18. But the fact that she was 17 and it's not legally acceptable, the internet loves a good uh, predator story to mm. fucking get their fucking, to get their bags filled. So everyone's going to make a video. The commentators start running the rough, like running the laps around it. So, so yeah, I don't know much to say. <clears throat> Stupid decision. We'll see what happens. Not my wife's taking over here. What are you? What are you looking for? Do y'all plan on having another kid? No. Oh yeah, I thought we were. Don't no, fuck with I me. I know. I'm just kidding. No, we uh, are no. decidedly not having more. We plan. We I think plan to be one and done, and we've uh, stuck with it and we're happy with it. Yep. And that's it. Very content. Yep. Feels complete. Coke Zero or Diet Coke? <clears throat> oh, Coke Zero. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I like I, both, but <clears throat> Coke Zero is better. I need and to see it. Cherry Coke Zero is even better. Yeah, they want to know and why as well. Oh. Uh, just taste wise. So, like, I've, yeah. I mean, Diet Coke is uh, tail as old as time. Coke Zero came out when I was younger, obviously later in the game. And then I, I've never been a diet soda guy for years and years until kind of recently I had. You got like some mini Coke Zero cans, and I was like, "Yo, these are kind of fucking nice." Yeah, it's like a once in a while, little yeah, something is. or other. I'm it's not like, like I'm chugging not, thirty a day. That's right. I'm not drinking them every day. I'm not drinking multiple a day. But it's like occasionally we'll be having dinner, and I'll be like, "Do I want a seltzer? Do I want water?" It's like you know, I can go for a little mini Coke Zero right now, and I'll crush a that shit. Soda. Yeah, we do. So Coke Zero, Coke Zero, uh, strictly for me, based on the taste. I, I can't even tell you the last time I had a Diet Coke, but I just remember never being impressed with the taste of Diet Coke. Just always being like, oh, this I is. I like it. I When I was in like younger college and shit and like trying to, you know, lose weight and I was lifting, like I I, I would occasionally get a Diet Coke in the 20 ounce bottles. Do you, by the way, does anybody buy 20 ounce bottles of soda anymore? Does soda even come in 20 ounce bottles? It does. Am I just so out of touch from soda? You don't that go to like the grocery a, store. Yeah, you're right. I just wouldn't know anything about that. Dude, oh my God. This guy says, dude, you didn't blur feet. You know what people are like? Oh no. Are your feet in the picture? Oh Jesus. Oh, well there's sandals on. That's acceptable. As long as they're, as long as they're sheathed. So to, for anyone listening, we I posted a picture when I was asking the community, I said, Mrs. Lush is very lonely. So she's joining me on the podcast and I give us ideas to talk about and- <laughs> just took a picture of you sitting by yourself at the table and love it. I thought this comment was funny because you're just, you. I, I love you so much, but you're just not a good actor, no. which is fine. And so, uh, where they, it looks like Mrs. Lush can't even keep a straight face for getting this pic taken. A true non-internet person. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you kind of nailed it. What am I smirking? You, at, I mean, yeah, look, you, you're like trying to have a straight face and it's like, you're just <laughs> clearly just being like smugly. Like I know I'm having a photo taken of me right now. I couldn't possibly pretend like, I don't know that the pics are just being taken. Well, you got to say something that prompt me to think that. Honey, I don't know. It's honey, not going to come from me. We have done a few multiple sessions of trying to take thumbnail faces from you on the camera and getting you to do any sort of facial expression is a difficult bid. Yeah. But I don't complain because your face looks so good. It's like, what am I going to say? You would probably lend a, if you had a weird, crazy busted face, it might lend itself to better, uh, you know, clicks, but that's why we just in include your boobs instead. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm just kidding. All right, guys, we're going to do one last pivot here because I recently was made aware of this earlier tonight, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, <clears throat> Jesus. All right. We've talked about a lot of things. There is a company called Scentbird that I've done a few sponsorships with. They are a fragrance subscription company. 
Um, so, you know, you sign up, and they send you a couple sample fragrances that you kind of choose and you can get the full bottles. And for what it's worth, pretty good company. If you're someone that's into wearing fragrances, you can get a lot of options. Uh, you know, you can try a lot of things without committing to the whole bottle. It gives you some some options if you want to commit and buy something bigger. Subscription model makes sense. Decent company. Never had problems with them. I've probably done two or th I think I've done three spots with them over the last two or three years. Um, recently, their CEO has been under scrutiny for being an absolute fucking whack job. <laughs> I mean, just like the most insane type of wacko you can imagine. Uh, and I've seen a few videos crop up. Moist Critical, Charlie, um, most of you guys listening probably know who he is. He just uploaded a video about it. It, it was from a stream highlight like he likes to do. Uh, but there's one video in particular that I think encapsulates what this woman is about. And we're going to watch through some of that because it's just so curious. But before we do that, there's this article, there's articles of it too. So this is uh, the business of fashion. So it's, it's a publication. It says Semper CEO is also a spiritual guru. Not all custom customers are pleased. The byline is the co-founder of the Netflix for fragrance. They call it right. Cause it's a subscription. Uh, Maria Nurishlamova has been moonlighting as a spiritually, as a spirituality influencer. Excuse me. Uh, she comments on extraterrestrials, the Matrix, and Hitler, uh, and has recently attracted negative attention. And then this picture just has a bunch of thumbnails from a lot of her TikTok videos. So she has a couple hustles. She does a lot of TikTok videos, which are obviously shorter, and she also has a YouTube channel. Um called This Is Mariah, where she does these kind of guided spiritual meditations. And how many subs does she have? And she just keeps her eyes closed the whole time. She closes her eyes, does these meditations. She's got 65,000 subs, 630 videos. So, I mean, she's pumping out content. That's a yeah. lot of videos. That's yeah. more than, that's for, that's more videos than I have on my main channel that I've been running since 2016. Well, holy shit. Right? So she's cooking videos. Um, just for context, one of the thumbnails on a TikTok here on this auto, I'm not going to go to her TikTok because there's plenty of content that we can get through here. It says, uh, it reads, your teeth are not randomly crooked. There is a spiritual meaning. Every little aspect of the tooth is a map, right? No. <laughs> so just to give you a little, there's, uh, one of the things I heard is that she made some comments about Hitler not being evil, which is obviously going to ruffle some feathers. Um, that's a cute one. Consuming honey makes you a better person. Blue eyed people feel more connected to God. Okay, honey, you feel that? I do. I feel very close to God right now. Okay. I think that's the booze though. I'm not sure it's my eyes. Yeah, it's just a couple martinis, some wine and a little espresso martini. It's, it's, it's no, you know what? It is the ice. It's the ice. I was wrong. Um, so let's take a look at the YouTube channel here. Uh, and if you're listening, we'll, we'll, you'll get to listen in uh, to some of the things. Just some of the thumbnails. We have why you keep losing things from a spiritual perspective. Um, guided meditation, relief stress, and suboptimal energy. All very interesting stuff. But she has some that I'm, I'm very interested in. Um, one in particular was... Let me zoom out here. I saw it earlier. It was about coffee. And it was very curious to me because I am a coffee lover. My wife is a coffee lover. Hello, my lover. darlings, and welcome back to Conversations with My Higher Holy Self. Holy shit. Today that was a, that's an hour-long video. No, we're not getting to that one. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Spiritual so, reasons for being overweight. Yeah, oh, dude. These could be good. 33 oh, minutes, spiritual sake. reasons for being overweight. Next to that, 38 minutes, abortion and miscarriage from the spiritual perspective. Fuck. And I, I'm I'm not going to watch this whole thing, but uh, I did see a clip of her in the video we're about to watch where she's basically saying, you know, if you had the right energy and mindset, like you wouldn't have a miscarriage, basically, is what like some real fucked up shit. So um, I really just my wife just killed over and died for anybody, for anybody that's not that's listening and not watching. Uh, I really want to find this coffee one, though. Clearly, and then that's we're gonna never happened to her. Uh, yeah. Why you keep losing things, q and a. Here we go. The dark truth about coffee. It is a toxin that darkens your aura. 
So right out of the gates, I would just I just want to tune in here. Just to, we're just going to skip around it and and just because you know me like this. I've done some videos before about kind of like the spiritual guru type, uh, the aura types, the the chakra, the um, the stars, the the planets, the um, what do you call it? What are the astrology, whole, the astrology type, like anyone who's into this kind of like energy aura and thinks they know how everything works because everything's energy. I just, I fucking love it because I just look at you and I pity you. And I just think you're such a full blown retard. It's so, it's so fun. And I apologize because, you know, I'm being a little bit disparaging right now. And I do think there's maybe some benefit. It's just a different form of religion to me, really, where you find, what do you find meaning in? It's like, oh, you don't believe in God. You believe in energy and chakras and auras and that informs everything in your life. And the crazy part for me is like, this is a highly successful woman. I mean, this woman must be multiple seven figures, runs a business that's probably worth multiple, you know, could sell it for, I don't know, tens of millions of dollars probably. And here she's going out of her way to make these videos. So uh, let's- Sad spirit guy. Sorry. Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Maria. Please subscribe below so we can be YouTube friends. No mind Today if we're I do. talking about coffee, specifically coffee from this I'm spiritual perspective. I'm drinking coffee right now. I will share what my guides have said, spirit guides, that is, about coffee. Does she, in her videos, like, promote her own brand? <clears throat> Just um, out of curiosity. So I don't know the answer to that, but okay. my guess is that no. My guess is right. that this is a completely independent endeavor for her. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Like there's definitely content about her being the Scentbird CEO and she talks about the company, but I think this channel specifically is completely unrelated. Okay. Yep. Coffee. How much and if I am drinking coffee and what I would recommend if you are on the spiritual path. Coffee is a fascinating topic. Sure is. Would you consider yourself on the spiritual path? Nope. All right. Well, maybe we could get some insight then. I, I myself have gone through like ups and downs in my relationship with coffee. I started off not drinking any up until I was in my mid 20s, then drinking up to four cups a day yeah, as I was working gang. on my startup company. It's been has been a ride. Since my awakening, um, I have been optimizing <laughs> a lot of what I eat, what I consume, what I drink. And a lot of it has been prompted by my spirit guide. So my Love it. I'm glad she's actually chapped. She's added chapters to her videos so I can kind of skip around and know what she's talking about. This is currently her journey with coffee. And she just, did she just mention a spirit guide? Mm -hmm. Spirit guides do dictate my diet, if you will. And they do comment on certain... Mm, on certain products that I eat. And coffee has been one that they specifically called out as an interesting product to be aware of and or be aware of uh, of its impact. There have been others. Um, my guides have spoken up um, about alcohol as well. If you guys want me to make a video about alcohol and how that impacts your spirituality, your energy body, your auric field, please drop me a comment below. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, it's fucking up my work field. <laughs> right now, my work field is fucking turned. Oh, uh, I do want, I do hope she makes that video about alcohol and how it fucks up your work field. Um, there's maybe some more clinical reasons why it fucks people up, but I mean, if it's it messes, great for your yeah, golf game, I, though. Yeah, listen, if it messes up your aura, that's more concerning to me than if it makes you make terrible decisions and gives you a fatty liver over chronic abuse. Uh, yeah. And I'll make sure to record one. Like, like alcohol, I can understand. Like that can fuck up your aura, you know? Coffee though? A, a, a toxin that darkens your aura? I mean, come on. Let's, let's leave coffee alone. What did coffee ever do to you? We're going to skip through to how car... I want to skip to the part where it says how coffee darkens your aura. I want to know okay. the methodology, the why behind me drinking coffee like how much my aura. how many vague words is she going to use so many so fucking many i can't Reason. wait so what ends up happening with coffee is coffee is one of those me. products that darkens your auric field does it? it darkens your light bodies what does it mean so essentially when coffee gets into your physical body it impacts more than your physical it impacts your energy obviously we know that that's why you know that's why a lot of us have coffees because we want to pick me up we want an energy spike but when coffee is giving us an energy spike, 
it also darkens our aura as it does. Um, you know, as it does so, as it works with our um, body. So it's almost like when coffee gets into your aura, it creates these little anchors or these little dots of itself. It's almost like it's um, it gives an energetic imprint into your body. And though that energetic imprint is kind of what causes an addiction. So vague words right now. Energetic imprint. What I didn't I didn't foresee any <clears throat> vague words coming at me. What? <laughs> it creates an energetic imprint. Anchors. Energetic Anchors, imprint. Anchor, energetic imprints. We got to be playing. Like, we need to be playing vague bingo right now. Yeah. Let's keep it going. I like this. Uh, because it, or like it, drink it's gonna, every time she you know, says. It's going to start aura. making yeah. you want to reach out for the next cup, the next cup, and the next cup. But not only that. Yes. It tastes it, good. Dude. Over time, it really darkens your aura in the same way that it, like physically on the physical uh, level, it darkens your yellows, your teeth. Um, no. Energetically, it darkens no. your aura. Oh, my that, God. No. Well, no. Well, no, it can yellow your teeth, obviously. Yeah, I know, but... but, but but it's not the same as it darkens your aura. Right? There's an actual physical reason. Yes. Why it darkens your teeth. I like that. So she said something tangible. She but tried. related it to something completely, uh, uh, what did you call it? Vague and intangible. What is yeah. the problem with a darkened aura? A lot of things. When we are in the spiritual path, and in general, if you if you think about the evolution of souls... And I, I'm going to go very lofty, and then we're going to come down uh, Ooh, for a quick please. second. Loft me um, up, when bitch. our souls evolve, like at soul level, when you evolve, over time, what ends up happening to your soul is you accumulate more and more light in your body. So you grow and expand, and you grow and expand by accumulating more light and kind of releasing darkness, if that makes sense. Um, it does over not. here, a lot of things in your life are dependent on how much light you can hold within your body, especially if you're on a spiritual path. For people that are able to hold on a lot of light in their auric fields, um, their spiritual gifts open up, um, their abundance channels open up, their talents open up. Essentially, like their higher selves come through and then the body is considered clean. So your higher self is willing to inhabit more of your physical body and therefore you will always have connected. You become a channel. So in other words, when you are in a spiritual path, when you are in a path of awakening, how much light you can hold in your etheric body, in your light bodies, if you will, is directly, directly proportional to your gifts, your levels of happiness, and how much on your path you are. Um, and so-, so she was honest that she was going to get a little bit lofty. Yeah. To start. Um. I believe that she believes what she's saying. I agree with you. I do. She or, believes this. <clears throat> so, so this is why I said like this is, it's a type of religion. Exactly. Like, yeah. I, I'm not all oh, I'm not convinced that she's not trying to become some cult leader though. Yeah, but it, it, like she's but, but, trying to like but when you think get about people to join her. cult leaders, like do you think they're doing it for nefarious reasons or do they genuinely believe the shit that they say? I think that I think a little bit of both. Yeah. I I there's definitely just like some of the cult documentaries that we've watched, like yeah. I do think they believe these things, but it ultimately turns into a power Power, power, money, money, power, money, influence. Because they realize, like, okay, this is a way for me to get people to believe in my shit and I, th- I think gain power I th- and money I th- and influence. I think that for a lot of people like this, and I think about this a lot with prosperity preachers, mm. who I've done a lot of videos on on my on my channel, that you know, oh, man. I could go on for days, but it's it's not dissimilar where it's like you're preaching to con- congregations of thousands of people who are downtrodden and looking for hope, and you're bringing up actors to like pretend like you're exercising demons out of them. They're falling. People are getting out of wheelchairs, right? And like there are people in that field that I think are truly just charlatans that know how evil they are, and they're just taking advantage of the most vulnerable people on the planet. And that drives me nuts. But then there's kind of this middle level to me where I think there are people that deep down in their subconscious know they're full of shit, but have manifested it to the point where they, part of them actually actually believes they're helping people. Sure. Even though there is this part of their subconscious locked away that has to know that they're full of shit, right? So it's like, I grapple with this a lot because, you know, I I come from a religious background and 
you know, I, I, we talk about what she's talking about right now, kind of being her religion. She strikes me as someone that, you know, I don't, she's cl- clearly not doing it for the money. Like she's fucking made her money. That's the crazy. Uh, that's the, you think that, but people who have made money usually want to make more fucking you know money. What? You could be right. You could Dude, be she's right. She's an entrepreneur at heart. Yeah, you could and be she's right. Like what's the easiest way to make money? Just make people believe Spe- in my shit. Spiritual guru. Spiritual guru is a huge, huge grift right now because mm. obviously the, the more desperate and kind of like fucked up, like society becomes. And like, as the, the wealth gap widens and all these things you see where people become more and more desperate, uh, what do people turn to religion, spirituality, things that can give them a sense of purpose, things that can ease their doubts about, you know, why they exist or their meaning in life. And you are right. So, I mean, nobody knows except her. I think that in this, you know, this is a very, this is a very small, small, small snippet into the absolute, massive catalog of content she's made around the spirituality mm-hmm. bit and let's just not forget she started as an entrepreneur yeah and i get you know what spirituality guru is it, it can be a business yeah you're right so we're gonna we're gonna skip off that coffee video because i've kind of heard what i need from there and we're don't gonna, take a sip of your coffee drink right there because it's got coffee and alcohol and your aura is turning really dark and i'm not say, okay i get the double whammy i Holy have coffee shit. and alcohol your soul in this is drink. Black, you're gonna crumble into dust and i'm gonna miss you i'm gonna be honest like i'm not absorbing as much light as i usually do right now because like i'm surrounded by lights because we're on a podcast we got one two three four lights and normally like i'm expanding because when I'm like when my soul's operating at a high frequency, I'm always expanding with the light that's shining on me. And as I take sips of this coffee, um, I can feel the light kind of like exorcising itself out of my toenails. And do you feel some darkness? Well, yeah. Well, the that's from the it's from the coffee. Um, what was it? Grappling. It was grappling onto my. Was it grappling? What was it? Anchoring. Anchoring. Yeah. The the coffee's anchoring onto the normal um, sheets of light that line my torso area. Mm. And as I drink the coffee, I can feel it kind of matriculating down my thighs. And for whatever reason, this might be uh, just uh, like kind of like a higher energy that's kind of giving me this feeling. But I can feel it leaving through my toes right now, like okay. the, the light. So like normally the light that it would absorb make me bigger. The coffee's kind of weighing it down a little bit as it goes down my legs and seeps out through my toes. Uh, and I can really feel my energy levels not at a level that I'm used to. See, I can do it too. Like I could talk like that for hours. You particularly yeah. Oh, yeah. could make that shit up and go run oh, with my, it. I would fucking crush spiritual spirituality. If you want to just turn into a wackadoo. Oh my God. I could you start, could. Oh, dude, I could start a cult so fucking fast. Are you kidding me? That, I mean, I. You mean you know how to prey on people's insecurities? Oh my God. I would fucking crush as a spirituality guru. I have a history in churches with mm-hmm. prosperity, like I, I can do the preacher thing. Like I could absolutely smoke this genre and I can't believe I'm just pissed that my parents gave me some sort of moral foundation to the point. I can't allow myself to do that because I could make a lot of money doing it. Thankfully I can make money making fun of dumbass fucking motherfuckers like this instead <laughs> and, rem- and maintain my authenticity and my, and my integrity. But, uh, Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that is dark. I the anchors, the anchors are heavy. They're heavy. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna parlay this into so there's a girl named uh Kia's World on YouTube. She made a video about this girl. It's a well done video. I haven't seen the whole thing. I watched the intro. I thought it was a very good kind of synopsis that gives us a little more insight into this CEO's grift, right? And I just want to make sure I'm giving her proper credit. Um Kia's world, K E Y A S world on YouTube. Um, it's three weeks ago she posted it. It's got a hundred eighty thousand views, and like I said, I've only watched about 60, 80, 50 seconds of it. It was really well done. So shout out to her. But Some of my favorite with. YouTubers have promoted a brand that normally wouldn't show up on my scam slash problematic radar scanner. And that's also why this hits home to me because. Here you go. I'm one of those YouTubers that promoted Scentbird three times. And, I, you know, not the type of brand you would ever be like, oh, I'm promoting something sketchy. It's like, and right. I still don't feel that way, but I would 
in hindsight, if they reached out again and was like, do you want to do a thing with Scentbird? I'm like, well, your CEO is kind of a fucking psycho, well so I'll pass. <laughs> but I'm not going to be like sad that I did it. <laughs> the right, information like, right. hey, It's not like some sort of nootropic or weird pill that's supposed to make your dick fucking hang to the left or something, you know? Is what it is. Anyway, Scentbird. 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 Scentbird is a perfume subscription company that at least outwardly looks successful. It's not an MLM. It's not promising to cure cancer. So why do I care? It's because the CEO of Scentbird, Maria Nurislamova, stinks. Our bodies choose to miscarry, uh, miscarry children. Oh, there it's it is. It's not an accident that happens. It's a choice. If people were to align with our life purpose, we would see a lot, a lot less cancer on planet Earth. You could heal yourself from any disease. I don't care if it's cancer. I don't care if it's AIDS. It could be whatever, but you could heal yourself in the span of under seven days. Seven days, sweetheart. Holy shit. Cancer, AIDS, do oh, not she's give Lulu, beyond a belief. Fuck. Yeah, so this is what, I feel like the coffee thing was just real surface level. You know, we were just scratching the surface and then kudos to Kia's world. She's obviously done the research to go down the rabbit hole. Of this bitch's content, which I could not bring myself to do. But what are we talking about? Cancer and AIDS? Seven days if you could just convince yourself. She must have some sort of background of like Christian Scientology or something. I I don't know. I just, man, I fucking love it. And she believes it. that miscarriage is a choice? Holy Was a choice. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that one. So that I feel like is one of the ones that easily got people riled up oh, if you're yeah. a woman who's gone through that trauma right and you're gonna have this bitch out here all oh done God. up and fucking millionaire being like well if you just if you chose not to have the miscarriage you wouldn't have had it because your aura was full of too much coffee and not enough light like go fuck yourself right unbelievable we're gonna talk about the spiritual reasons for being overweight like look at yeah. he's one of the, the the poster child here we go children for like being an evil person do you know how many millions of souls benefited from learning from the experience that he has created so is he evil not really. I don't think so. <gasps> yeah, she really did say that. Did you catch that? Yeah. Why she close her eyes so much? So that's her thing. She the the guided meditation. She keeps her eyes closed during the whole thing. It's part. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, like you would want to keep them open to let more light in, <laughs> but maybe she's of the uh, you know of the belief that light escapes through your eyes, so it's like oh. keep them closed. Okay. To keep the light in. Or maybe she needs to close her eyes so she could see deep down inside of her own soul. Yeah. To speak from it. Yeah. All I'm saying is like, I hate that we've spent years trial and error, exercising, busting our ass, cooking, eating to try and be in shape when we could have just taken a little more light in. You know? It's like, why, why go through the trouble of doing the hard work when you can just make the spiritual guided meditation choice of, I don't even, I would love to watch that video on a separate occasion. Oh yeah. To see like why it's a, what is it? It's a spiritual, I don't fucking know. It's we'll awesome. go in depth on that specific video later, but first we have to understand what the f is going on here. <laughs> I discovered Maria for the first time while live streaming. By day, she's a serial entrepreneur, founder and CEO of a multi-million dollar beauty startup. And by night, she's a spiritual teacher, intuitive channeler and writer. Since her awakening in 2018, she's been guided. Okay, what multi-million dollar beauty startup is she a part of? Now I'm curious. She, she started Scentbird? No yeah, way. Yeah. <sighs> Well, I've heard of that before. That's like, that is like a multi-million dollar startup. I had no clue. It seems like Maria lives a double life. Half the time, she's the leader of this successful startup that launched in 2014. She hosts a podcast about fragrance and represents her company as a well-spoken, confident entrepreneur. But then in 2018, she had an awakening. I started getting into spirituality just by consuming some content that happened prior to my awakening. I think maybe... <laughs> Anyway, I always get a kick out of people that say that I'm getting into spirituality. What does that what does that mean exactly? How do you just get into spirituality? Like you watched a couple of TikToks and now and believed everything they said. That's what I like. You you watched a few TikToks and now you think that you think that you can just everything has to do with light and auras and energy like uh, Yeah, I, I, I was trying spirituality for a little bit, didn't like it. Yeah, I went back to, uh, like, I don't fucking, it's just so funny the way it sounds. Like, 
Oh, yeah, I tried being saved by Jesus for a minute. Eh, it was all right, but I prefer spirituality instead. Yeah, The light thing was more believable than, you know, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost stick. That, I mean, come on. Who can believe that? But light? Yeah, or I'll just expand, contract, darkness, anchors, the whole nine, coffee, booze. Makes about sense. two years prior. So my awakening actually happened unprompted when I, I was on vacation with my parents in Portugal and it started via a dream. I'll summarize this part oh for you God, because literally you. there's nothing worse than someone explaining their dream to you. So in the dream, she's <laughs> a creepy old castle and she sees a golden window and hears a voice. That voice, I cannot explain it. It was like God spoke to me. And then she woke up from that dream and decided she's better than everyone and has special abilities and gifts. And just a few years later, here we are settled down in crazy town. Also, I just gotta <laughs> say, I love when these gurus say that the universe was speaking to me or God was speaking through me. <sighs> It really reminds me of Gabby Bernstein. At which point I feel this energy begin to move me and lift me up and bring me to my desk. And I sit down at my desk and involuntarily I place my hands on the keyboard of my computer and my fingers just start typing. And they're moving and they're moving and all of a sudden at the top of the page, the words that were not mine came onto the page and words that were not mine, ideas that were not mine, belief systems, guidance, wisdom that was not mine came onto this page. In my opinion, this is just a way for gurus to feel superior and declare power over others. And also Maria has probably one of my favorite The Universe Was Speaking Through Me videos of all time. The energy exchange for this is gonna be $250. Yeah. That's what Spirit wants to charge for this. It's not really me. <laughs> Uh, oh, fuck, dude. Told you she's an you entrepreneur. You got me, bro. She saw the market and she doubled down. Yeah. She's like, I conquered the fucking fragrance market. What can I do next? Yep. I can prey on insecurity. It's the energy exchange is going to be $250. That's what the spirit told me to do. Yeah. That's what the spirit wants me to <laughs> charge for this. It's just a fucking, it's like a, it is, it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's prosperity preacher, but without God. It's just light it like it's just light and energy is replacing God, basically. Yeah. And it's the same grift. Wow. Wow. This is fucking I love I love this video. First of all, I just, huge shout out to this Kia's World girl who doesn't oh, have a so lot of good. doesn't have a lot of subscribers on YouTube, but really good video. Because it's really spirit and the universe that's working with you. It's not really me. Give me all your money. $250 specifically. Why are you doing this? Okay, it's not me. It's spirit in the universe that wants this. It is not me, okay? Just make sure you know that. It's not me. Thank you. If you are wondering what <laughs> spirit and the universe wants Maria to charge 250 stinking American dollars for, here's the answer. Spirit just comes through and they're like, Maria, you want to teach people how to release their trauma through dance? And I'm like, <sighs> We're talking somebody murder your entire family trauma that I can help somebody release through a few motions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back on track here, shall we? Yo, this girl's funny, dude. This she, girl's good. She reminds me of myself in like 2018 when I used to actually put effort into my videos. Aww. <laughs> good cutaways, like good little B-roll from like, you know, really going the extra mile to make good commentary. I love it. Oh, love you'll it. notice in a lot of her videos, she closes her eyes so she can better channel her higher self. My podcast is a channeled experience. I recorded from a state of trance which essentially is the way I get there is through self-hypnosis. So I generally channel my podcast with my eyes fully closed. I talk to spirit. Huh? I look strange as I am recording videos as I talk to spirit. And sometimes I have to wear glasses because I frankly don't even know what I look like when my eyes are twitching. <laughs> my eyes are probably twitching when I'm channeling, like who knows? <laughs> Yeah, this is much less distracting. When I channel with my eyes open, I can do it, but my connection is not as strong. And also the reason I don't always do that is because the information sometimes comes through visually. And now my third eye is always open, but when my eyes are closed, depth of the image that comes through is actually a lot better. And so I see the intricacies of how energy moves a lot better when my eyes are closed. So in other words, you know, if I tried to channel with my eyes open, I'd maybe get 60% um, of the connection that I would with my eyes closed. Did you totally see the spirit right now? It was just like a white spirit that just went over. Are you okay? 
Let's throw on that instant replay for a second. Girl, that is dust. Clean your house and then (laughs) seek help, please. Okay, so in addition to her channeling YouTube channel, Maria also has the typical low-level spiritual (laughs) grifter offerings. She's got some pricey and, Mm. in my opinion, offensive webinars. She's got in-person retreats. The one in England is my favorite because Maria says, quote, my gifts and powers are always amplified in England. Gifts that will set you back a nice $1,111, not including flights or hotel well all right then but this offering is tune i like man you were right i'm so i'm so pathetic i didn't just see right through it like but still like even that said do we does do you think she believes what she's saying or does she just is she i think she does an entrepreneur i think she might it's I think a, yeah there's this it's like a god complex she believes right it yeah. and knows how to capitalize on it oh my is the God, most outrageous. It's a one-on-one them. retreat for entrepreneurs, leaders, business owners, influencers, executives, and wealthy individuals asking themselves a question. What's next? Wealthy being the most important here because it costs $125,000. I was going to be like, honey, if it's like a few grand, like, should we do it and make a video? 125 I'm not G's. dropping six figs. Uh should we start a GoFundMe to go there? Moron. I no. I would never if it was like five grand, I'd be like, yo, if you guys want to pitch in, like we'll <laughs> figure it out. But like 125K simply for the fact that she would be receiving that money. I wouldn't oh my God. What does Whoa. that include? A three night stay at Maria's house in Florida. What? <laughs> And it also says, please note, Maria's home is not a five-star hotel, but a sanctuary. It is less luxurious and more wholesome. Uh, are you gonna add me to the deed of this wholesome home for that price? Oh my yeah. God. Let's actually break this down for a second. So it's $125,000 for three days. Okay, that's $41,666 a day. And take a look at those angel numbers, am I right? That equates to $1,736 an hour and a whopping $28 a minute. I thought this 24 day private jet around the world tour of every Disney theme park was insane, but buying that instead of Maria's retreat would actually save you $10,000. Now I will give her a smidge (laughs) of credit here because she does specify who this retreat is not for. Anyone with a late stage terminal disease looking for a magic pill (laughs) and anyone who needs to borrow money to be able to participate in the program. So mostly everyone. (laughs) And of course you have to apply to see if you're worth giving Maria this insane amount of money. Okay, it's almost time to dive deeper into the video that I think is the most offensive in Maria's collection of offensive videos. Look at Hitler, is he evil? Not really, I don't think so. But before we do that, we gotta look quickly at some of her other videos. But subconsciously, when you're reaching out for that piece of baguette, you are craving the nurturing of your father or his energies in your life. Even when you're watching Harry Potter, do set protections on yourself. You're gonna thank me later. Sometimes you guys think that you just like, your teeth are randomly crooked, but they're not randomly crooked. Every little like aspect of the tooth is a map. And here are some of her great video titles. Tomatoes and potatoes are here to keep you safe. Pets are not random. Consuming honey makes you a better person. The root cause of the heart disease. Abortion and miscarriage (laughs) from the spiritual perspective. Trigger warning if you end up watching that video, for real. Coffee is bad for your aura. The next 18 years are going to be pretty tough. Me, when I was born a Bills fan. All right, now let's get into the really, really bad (laughs) What? (laughs) This bitch is so funny, dude. She was cut. She said... The title of her video was next eight years are going to be pretty tough. And she goes, me, when I was born a Bills fan. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh. Yeah, that's so funny. As a Patriots fan, that's even funnier. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> the title is Q&A, how does God perceive time? Does God have a shadow side? And other questions answered. She spends more than an hour channeling her inner wisdom while her husband gives some amazing feedback. Interesting. That's very interesting. So interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Say the line, Bart. <laughs> That's very interesting. Yeah! Also, side note about her husband, he's the founder and COO of Scentbird. So basically, this whole company is batch. So Oh, they started it together. Okay. okay. So yeah, they're co-founders, COO, CEO. They're both fucking wow. 
Wow. I would love to know more about him now. Right at the end of the video, Maria decides to answer this question. I think we have time for one more question. Can a higher self be evil? How does a higher self guide an incarnation who meant to enact evil? That led her into a whole monologue about how we're all put on Earth to learn and experience things. And then things start getting dark. What does it feel like to kill 30 people? What does it feel like to kill 100,000? You know what I mean? And is it evil? Not if your intention is to understand murder. Because by the virtue of you understanding murder, you are sharing that learning and you're uploading it up to the Akashic Records where everybody else can learn from it. And that is a very important distinction to make. Because Dude, look at her husband's face right now. Like how he can't possibly be sitting there thinking like, yeah, this she's fucking, like, yeah, she's, she's going totally, off. Yeah, she's totally, yeah, she's got it. Yo, she's spitting right now. She's spitting right now. I need now. to know if they have kids. It's like, is this what money does to people? Or like, you know what I mean? Like what? No. Uh, not always. Sometimes though, if you don't have any sort of moral foundation to rely on and all of a sudden you get rich and you're like, wow, all my money problems are solved and now I need to figure out meaning outside of money. And then this shit happens. Or something, maybe not. I don't know, but holy fuck, let's let's continue. So at one point, somebody has to be the soul that is going to get the learning of what it feels like for the rest of existence and for Look the rest face. of the higher selves mm -hmm. and you know like, for source itself. So somebody has going? to take one for the team, so to say, and learn. And that was it. Hitler that took one for the team. <laughs> All right, who took one for the team, sweetheart? That is how you may get like a mass murderer or somebody who starts a world war, or somebody who I don't know, blows up a nuke a teacher. and a kills, teacher. Uh, demolishes a whole city. That is one way that you can get there. And by the way, like look at Hitler. He's one of the the, the poster child He's children in for like being an evil person. Do you know how many millions of souls benefited from learning from the experience that he has created? So here you may put, you know, Oh, the husband's Did you see like, his yeah. face? No, he was like, so, what? No, he Hold on. he shook his head yes. Yeah, but like he also was like smarting a little bit. Like, whoa, fuck, what's she doing? Like, I'm an absolute buffoon, but that's a little crazy. From learning what? from the experience that he has created. So Ooh. here you may put, you know, like look at <laughs> a character flustered. like him and he's be like, flustered. oh, he's completely evil. And upstairs, his experience was the greatest, one of the greater sources of knowledge of 3D planet Earth war. Fair. And that is benefiting so many different souls in, in on their evolutionary path. So is he evil? Not really. I don't think so. So interesting. <laughs> oh my god. So so interesting. It's so interesting. Well, that's really yeah. That's a good point, sweetheart. Should I should I draw up your bath and make you your chamomile tea, sweetheart? This is just so interesting. What you're saying is very thought provoking. What a fucking loser, dude. <laughs> what an absolute fucking doormat. Oh my God. You couldn't, uh, I watch shit like this and I'm like, man, thank the good God on high or whoever you pray to that I did not end up like this motherfucker. Holy cow. That is just the worst existence. Look at this dude. I can't even imagine so interesting so interesting yeah that's... yeah i think that's one of the most offensive takes i've heard in a long time just because we have learned or just because we have improved somewhat since then does not mean hitler was a decent guy i'm sorry i'm just never gonna believe that and the fact that she's on the internet saying these types of things is nuts. Here are my final thoughts. Scentbird seems to be similar to products like Bloom and BetterHelp. The brand seems to rely heavily on influencer sponsorships to grow. My advice yes, is if you come Charlotte. across an influencer who is still taking <coughs> Scentbird sponsorships, politely, seriously, don't be a jerk, comment and let them know that the CEO of Scentbird is saying this crazy stuff online. Now, I'm not saying you should write a million comments or get upset if someone still chooses to keep working with the brand, but I do think bringing this to light is one small way that we can check people with power and influence. And if anything, it's hurting Maria not to be called out on her behavior because the longer it goes unchecked, the longer she thinks she is truly delivering divine wisdom and the deeper hmm. she'll slip into this madness. What I really hope she does is open her eyes and take a look in the mirror. Uh, hold on one second. I'm getting a message from Spirit. They said, thank you for watching this video and definitely subscribe. That's I will. Liked it. Great video. Um.
Wow. Unreal. Good video. Great synopsis. Kind of, it would have taken forever to see all that shit about Maria going through it ourselves. Um, You know, I I don't know if it's publicly traded or if there's a board, but like if this shit starts to gain traction, which it is right now, I mean, this video is a couple weeks ago. Charlie just uploaded a video about it and he's one of the biggest kind of like, what about guys talking about the big thing that will turn into a huge deal. I would not be surprised if there was uh, a reckoning where she's going to need to either get forced out of the company, relinquish control, hmm. if there's other board members or something. But right. I, especially after the Hitler comment, like that's going to go viral. Like this is the type of shit she's got. Like you know how many people watch her videos? She's got sixty thousand subscribers, and she has people that the guided meditations. But now that it's in the mainstream commentary sector, that loves to fucking squeeze the fucking squeeze the juice. Yeah. It's not going to go away until something happens. So I'm curious. And as someone who's worked with the company, yeah, wild. I know, you know, it, it, a company is obviously a lot more than the CEO, but I would probably just be like, yeah, I'm all set, dude. <laughs> if, if, they can, if they reach out again, unless she stepped down or whatever, because that's just some wild shit. I kind of want to make a video about this myself, but this girl did such a good job. I'm it's like, so yeah, good. I'm like, no, yeah, like, yeah you, no, you did it. Yeah. I'm all set. She did. She did a better job. Sorry, than yours wouldn't be as good. Yeah. That's so interesting. The, wow. His face. He was like, mm, yeah. And then he was like, oh, so oh, oh, honey, that's so interesting. Wow. Can I massage your feet? Are you okay? Honey, sweetie? Yeah, that's, that's good. Fucking a dude. Well, that's, uh, that was enlightening. I feel like my energy is a little dark right now, not from the coffee or the booze, but just from learning about that woman's existence and the content she makes on the internet. I want to give a round of applause for Mrs. Lush for being here with me tonight and being by my side as we're childless. And instead of, you know, doing what normal couples do, we made a podcast instead. Here we are. And man, I had a good time. That ending was fun for me. <laughs> um, thank you guys for listening as always. If you could... Uh, like and subscribe to The Guided Meditation by Maria. That would mean a lot to me. Don't do it. I'm just kidding. No, you know what? Don't do it. You should like and subscribe to this channel instead. (laughs) And we'll see you in the next Decently Indecent. Hope you have a great rest of the week. Peace. Say bye. Oh, bye. (laughs) I don't know what I'm doing.